We finally had week one of college football. Memphis played their first game of the season against North Alabama. It was fine, but not overly impressive, if you ask me, Gabe. From the 40 to nothing win over North Alabama, what were some of your takeaways from the game? Um, I, I'll listen. First half, great. Like everything sort of was, they handled everything they needed to in the first half. Nine points in the second half. They just, stop playing let's be right. honest they just sort of it was it was very bizarre to see how much they let their foot off the gas yeah. um but my takeaways um i think the defense looks solid but i can't really tell there's not that many things to you know uh write home about at this point two picks that was nice i think they had three sacks uh one of those by elijah herring uh, Chandler Martin, this is probably my biggest takeaway from the entire game, but it's something I expected. He's literally everywhere, isn't he? Everywhere. I mean, he 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 makes every tackle for this team. He's unreal. He's unreal. Yeah. Sideline Two and a half tackles for loss. Um, offensively, we know Seth Hennigan and the leading receivers on this team are ready to go. Rock Taylor, Demir Blankipsy looks solid. Um, Brendan Doyle had the big touchdown. That was fun to watch. I think Anthony Lanfear, the tight end, is going to be more of a safety blanket this year. Now, I, I really, though, I hate to say it, I, I took, and maybe this is just me watching with a eye in relation to, okay, this team wants to accomplish getting to the playoff this year. I, I took some negatives. Like, I really didn't take all that many positives. And really what I took is this old line, while they're decent um, as a pass-protecting offensive line, they didn't get any push up front against Northern Alabama, North Alabama. And that's a problem. They averaged what? 2.3 yards per carry against a team who played SEMO last week. And SEMO averaged 3.9 to four yards per carry. Six, six, six 6.2. Really? 6.2. Oh my gosh. I was way off. Um, so six that's, point. that's sad to watch. Uh, and you know, that to me is sort of the biggest thing I take away. And then you have the Sutton Smith injury that we'll get to in a little bit. So, but, but I'll, I'll go to you now, like sort of, I, I know you're probably going to echo a lot of things I said, but where yeah, were you at? A, a lot in the same vein. Uh, you started with talking about pulling the foot off the gas in the second half. And I just, I don't like that. Look around the country at what the top teams in the country did against inferior opponents this week. You look at Ole Miss against Furman, 76 to nothing. They did not take the foot off the gas. Tennessee, 69 to three against Chattanooga. Uh, Texas, was it 52 nothing against Colorado State? It, it's just, you, you don't do that. I mean, of course, yes, you're going to put backups in at a certain point and you, you're going to call the game a little bit more conservatively. But at the same time, like, why don't don't right. take them off the gate you don't get many opportunities to go out there and continue working through stuff and continue doing different things even though you don't want to give everything away i know that's like the big thing against inferior opponents but you don't have to settle for you know three and outs and running the ball three times in a row and sticking to short passing game like still open it up let the guys you know run deep routes take take shots you know do you know do some different things and they just didn't do that in the second half. They played it conservative. They took the foot off the gas and kind of coasted to a win. And I, I think if this was a 63 to nothing game or a 60 to nothing game, we feel way better about it. You just right. don't you don't like to see it go too conservative in, in, in those moments because that's been a criticism. Well, that's been a problem. Yeah. That's, that's Let's not lie. I mean, there was that year they went six and six where they were up 21 nothing against uh, uh, UTSA, UTSA and they had leads against several people on their schedule and they just let them go away. Let them right. go to waste completely because the second half they wanted to sit on the ball, try to run it and they didn't have a good run game and you don't yeah. want to see any type of replay of that. Yeah. Now, of course, the, I'm not going to say everything was negative. Seth Hennigan looked really, really sharp. I think he was what, 22 of 28 for, 22 of 30, 308, two TDs. Yeah, so very efficient game, did exactly what he was supposed to do. You mentioned, you know, Demir and Rock did what they were supposed to do, look like the guys that we know them to be. Chandler Martin, two and a half tackles for loss, was all over the field. Defense looked really good. Three sacks, eight tackles for loss as a defense, forced three turnovers. Uh, you're not going to take away a lot. We're not going to be able to say, okay, this defense is who we thought they were or they're worse than what we thought they were. 
it, that's just going to take time to flesh itself out. But they, you know, a shutout is a great thing regardless of who you play. Forcing turnovers, staying clean of turnovers on the offensive side of the ball. So there are definitely things that it's like, okay, they weren't they weren't turning the ball over. They weren't making these massive mistakes. They kind of just got complacent and finished the game out, which is not yeah. something that you really want to see. But to right. me, the biggest thing, and you have to – to me, you have to go here – is there is concern over this running game now. Averaging yeah. less than three yards per carry against North Alabama is not good. Yeah. Uh, e- even if you want to stay vanilla and run the same run concepts and not mix it up and not switch it up, it doesn't matter. You should average m- more than that. You you should look better on the ground than that. And they, they just didn't. They weren't able to get much push up front. There wasn't many running lanes, and that is not a good sign. And if – if North Alabama had shut SEMO down, maybe we'd be able to say, okay, well, yeah, whatever, right. it's kind of null and void, and we'll see as the season goes on. But SEMO ran all over them, 200-plus yards, 6.2 yards per carry. They had no problem running the ball, and Memphis could never get anything going. And now you have to be worried about that because, once again, that's another issue that we've seen in the past is this team not be able to run the ball. And although you feel very confident in Seth Hennigan and what he can do and what these receivers can do, you have to be able to take pressure off of him in the yeah. running game. So the hope right now has to be that this was the outlier and not what we expect to see the rest of the season. But that's hard to it's hard to say that right now. Yeah, when when he Seth Hennigan, I'm talking about, had an a thousand yard rusher next to him, he had the most touchdown passes he ever threw for in a season in 32. Right. It's not that complicated. And I think he threw for uh 600 yards like he, he it helped him as well with the yardage mm-hmm. and it helped this team be a whole lot more explosive in general and they didn't have a single real explosive play in the run game the longest run they had was 17 yards by mario anderson jr now i i understood like going into the year that he's going to be more of a banger in between the tackles and he's probably going to get most of the touches and he's not necessarily a guy who has a bunch of uh, breakaway speed so I didn't expect like these big 60-yard runs by any stretch of the imagination, but I expected you to be more efficient per Correct. play. And you you brought up the fact, you're, you're saying, well, maybe they're being vanilla, but that shouldn't be an excuse. Even if you run an inside zone every single play, you should average more than 2.3 yards per carry. I agree with you, but that's exactly what they did. Yeah. Right? They did. If you if you watch that game, they didn't do anything outside of just a simple inside zone handoff out of the shotgun. That's what they did every single play, um, whether they are on the goal line or, uh, you know, out in the open field. They just snap the ball. Here's the inside zone handoff. We'll see if this old line can get something done. But the problem was the, the old line didn't get any push. I think nope. they need a couple of more games together to build some chemistry. Um, but you're not going to be afforded that. You're going to have Troy immediately at home, and Troy's not going to be a pushover by any stretch of the imagination. Then you're going to have Florida State on the road. You have to get it going right now. I think they need to take it upon themselves to be a lot more aggressive in the run game and try to get after people a little bit more. I know there's a couple of guys who aren't like the heaviest in the world, like Chris Adams, their starting left tackles, listed at 277. So you don't expect him to be super dominant in the run game, but he can still take it upon himself to – get after somebody, you know, put his head down, start driving on somebody. It's just, it was very frustrating for me to see how badly that all that, that, that run game paced itself. And then now you add it, add in like Sutton Smith's going for an MRI. And that to me, like when you looked at this running back pairing, Mario Anderson Jr. Sure. He can make explosive plays, but he's going to be more of the every down, you know, three yards in a cloud of dust guy. Sutton Smith was supposed to be your big playback. Now you're going to have to turn to somebody else. I, I think we saw a little bit from Greg DeRosier Jr. Um, I think he's a transfer from UMass. Uh, yeah. He looks solid. That's who they turn to. But you lose your biggest play threat out of that backfield game one when you didn't have a good run game. Yeah, that and that and that's compounding the issues now like you're talking about. Because even if the offensive line, the run blocking wasn't as good – as advertised this year if we you know if we overhyped it and now it's this is just kind of what it is it's not going to be a great run blocking unit at least you had different variations of running backs that you could use and potentially pop big plays and make big plays but if if Sutton Smith is out extended period of time misses this season whatever then you really could be in trouble in the backfield not that I wouldn't trust Mario Anderson to get you know 18 to 23 carries a game or whatever 
But having that change of pace guy, the pass catcher, the guy that can break the big play in, you know, in, in there with Mario Anderson, you feel a lot better about. So I, I, you can't, it's hard to be overly negative about a win. And that's not what we're trying to do here. We're just trying to look at, you know, what this game told us. And that's, well, even outside of all the good, it has to be the biggest thing is this run game could be in trouble, not only because of the lack of winning up front we saw from the offensive line, but also the injury to Sutton Smith. It it, it, hurt, it hurts. It's a it's a big loss if he is gone for an extended amount of time, and it sucks because we've been waiting to see Sutton Smith for, what, two or three years now really be able to take over a big role. Well, I'll say this. You, 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 say, you talk about negativity, and it may seem like we're being a little negative. Well, the truth of the matter is this year um, – it, it, listen, it was 40 nothing win. You move on. You see what they look like next week against Troy. Like, I understand that. But at the same time, you, you are coming from a place this year, and I think most fans are in this space. You have to come from a place of what do they want to accomplish? They want to go win an AAC championship. They want to potentially be in the college football playoff. And to do that, you can't run the ball for 2.3 yards per carry against North Alabama. That's not how that works. Yeah. Against and the, the margin, more, the margin more for error is more accomplished for error is so on, small this year. Yeah, but like the more accomplished teams on your on your schedule are going to take advantage of you running the ball, uh, not being able to run the ball. Absolutely. At all. So you have to hold them to that standard to a certain extent. Like you have to, you know, what are their expectations versus what we saw on the field against an inferior opponent? And I, I don't think we saw enough. And I understand that Ryan and this staff are very much like, Let's completely hide what we're going to do against the beef of our schedule. I, I understand that. But at the same time, that was just a complete shutdown in the second half. You lost your one of your lead backs for the rest of the year, potentially, and you didn't run on the ball worth a damn. And you, you yeah. were hoping that everything came together, and it just didn't look quite like it. But obviously, everything could change. Everything could flip next week, depending on what this week of practice looks like and what they put out on the field against Troy on Saturday.